Welcome to Lab Wednesday with Dr. Ergen. We dissect a lab every Wednesday so you can understand your blood work better. If your fasting glucose is high, for example, most people jump to one conclusion. I must be eating too much sugar or I ate too much sugar last night. But in real clinical practice, fasting glucose is rarely about what you ate yesterday. It's about what your body is doing overnight. And today, I want to explain what high fasting glucose really means on your labs because once you understand this, a lot of confusion finally clears up. And here's the key idea. Fasting glucose is not a food test. It's a hormone and liver test, okay? So when you are asleep, you're not eating. So if your glucose is high first thing in the morning, that glucose did not come from food it came from your liver your liver's job overnight is to keep blood sugar stable by releasing small controlled amounts of glucose with the help of insulin that process is called hepatic glucose output in a healthy insulin sensitive body insulin really keeps that release tightly regulated but when the liver becomes insulin resistant that break fails so liver releases too much glucose, even when the body does not need it. That's the most common reason fasting glucose is elevated. This is why many people tell me, my daytime numbers are not bad, but my morning blood sugar is always high. The pattern points directly to liver insulin resistance, not dietary failure. Now let's talk about cortisol. Cortisol is your main stress hormone, right? It naturally rises early in the morning to help you wake up and get going. But when cortisol is chronically elevated from stress, poor sleep, or overtraining, or under eating, it actually signals the liver to release more glucose. Why? Because cortisol's job is to make fuel available. The problem is, in modern life, cortisol is often high when it shouldn't be. So instead of a gentle morning rise, you get an exaggerated glucose release and that pushes fasting glucose higher, even if you're doing everything right with food. Dawn phenomenon, right? Why stress management and sleep matter so much for glucose control and controlling the dawn phenomenon? Now, here is the part most people don't expect. Late night eating, right? So if you eat late, especially carbohydrates, right? Insulin stays elevated longer into the night, that's for sure. And that disrupts the normal overnight hormonal rhythm. So instead of insulin falling and growth hormone rising, insulin stays up. By morning, your liver becomes less responsive to insulin signal to shut off glucose production. So the liver overproduces the glucose. This is why someone can eat clean all day and have a late dinner and wake up with a higher fasting sugar. It's not the carbs themselves, it is the timing. Another clue comes from labs that travel together. If fasting glucose is high and triglycerides are elevated, that strongly suggests liver fat problem. Now, fatty liver is not just a liver condition, it is a metabolic dysfunction. A fatty liver becomes insulin resistant early, long before diabetes is diagnosed. And once that happens, fasting glucose becomes harder to control. So when I look at fasting glucose, I don't just look at the number. I look at the patterns. Morning highs with normal daytime sugar, think liver insulin resistance. High fasting glucose plus poor sleep, think cortisol dysregulation. High fasting glucose after late dinners, think circadian and insulin timing. This is why simply cutting sugar often does not fix fasting glucose because the problem isn't sugar intake, it is glucose production. So what actually helps then, right? First, improving insulin sensitivity, especially at the liver level. That means prioritizing protein resistance training cardio and reducing ultra processed carbohydrates or eliminating them even better secondly eating earlier finishing dinner at least three hours before bedtime makes a measurable difference for many people 
And if you really want to see a big difference, do five to six hours at least. Third, fixing the sleep. Because poor sleep will raise cortisol and glucose very predictably. This is well-documented physiology, so it's well known. Fourth, correcting the deficiencies like magnesium and vitamin D, which play real roles, big roles in insulin signaling. None of this is alternative medicine. This is basic endocrinology applied correctly. So if your fasting glucose is high, do not assume you are failing. Your labs are giving you information, not judgment. And once you understand that, what they're saying, what the labs are saying, you can actually fix the problem. If this explanation helped you understand your labs better, please hit that like button and subscribe and the bell button. Come back next Wednesday to hear a similar video for another lab. It helps us and other people learn what these numbers really mean if you click on the thumbs up button and share with someone that you know. And basically, comment below, right? What's your fasting glucose? Is it higher in the morning than later in the day? What's going on with your blood sugar? We also have Dr. Ergen Answers Friday, which I may be able to possibly take your question and answer um, while calling out your name. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next Wednesday.